So some product may, may be good, some product may be bad. So sometimes you know that uh, for certain companies they have to enforce quality control. And so the defective rate is 0 0.2, okay? The defective rate is 0 0.2. And now you randomly choose 100, okay? So because you want to control the quality, right? You want to know. Uh, if you randomly choose 100, are they, you know, up to the standard, okay? Are they up to the standard? So X is the number of defective items. So you randomly choose 100, right? If you randomly choose 100, if the number of defective item is exactly 0 0.2, okay? I mean, if the uh, defective rate is 0 0.2, how many would you expect in terms of the number that will be defective? If you choose 100, okay, how many should be defective? It is about 20, right? Because it's 0 0.2. What is this? This is relative frequency. And what is this? The number of sample. So what would you expect? You want to get the frequency, right? Just like the last question we talked about, right? So here is 0 0.2, and if you get exactly 20 defective items, what does that mean? It is about right, okay? It is about right. But what about if you get 40? There is something wrong, right? Because you only expect 20 to be defective, but you get 40. Basically, if you get more than 20, it should be a problem, okay? But sometimes, you know, the company may say, you know, if it is uh, between 21 and 24, it is fine. Between 21 and, I mean, 25 and 30, it is fine. It is up to you. If a company enforces a higher standard, they may use a lower number. So, for example, if you expect the number, I mean, the defective rate is equal to 0 0.2, you will require the number when you choose 100, okay? If you choose 100, then the number of defective items must be less than 20. Sometimes, you know, they may use different rules. But basically, this is what's going on here. Okay, now assume, okay? Assume it is a binomial distribution, okay? If we assume it is a binomial distribution, okay? So if it is a binomial distribution, can anyone tell me what is the mean and what is the variance? So, Mr. Fu, what's the mean and what's the variance? If it is a binomial distribution, it is equal to n times p and n times p q, right? And so, basically, you know, if you only try it once, that is what we call Bernoulli, right? If it is Bernoulli, it's 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 times 0 0.8, right? This is what we call a Bernoulli trial. And this is a binomial distribution, right? So the mean, okay, B, N times P, right? So it is 100 times 0 0.2, okay? And what is the variance? 100 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.8, okay? So basically what you get, you get it is a binomial distribution with mean 20 and variance 16, okay? So that's the reason we say we, we want to use, okay, we want to use a um, standard normal distribution to approximate the value of this. But basically, we still can use binomial distribution to calculate it. It is only that it's very complicated, okay? How to get a binomial distribution to calculate the probability of x between 12 and 28? So basically you should have summation, right? Okay, so Miss Wang, it's your turn. What is this? If, you, if we are going to use binomial distribution to calculate the probability here. So x is between 1, 12, and 28. Okay, and what's here? What's the next item here? You have a total of 100, right? And you are choosing the defective ones. 
how what's the number? The number is x, right? And this x can be between 12 and 28, right? Okay, Miss Wang, what's here? What should be here? It should be equal to 0 0.2 to x power, right? And then 0 0.8 to what power? What should be here? 1 minus, 100 minus x, right? So if you are going to use binomial distribution, you can do it, okay? But as you can see, it is very complicated, okay? Very complicated. So that's the reason we want to use binomial distribution. So it is here, right? Okay, the same thing. What you're going to find out is P of X between 28 and 12, okay? Because you are using a continuous distribution to approximate a discrete distribution, so actually you have to do, okay, actually you have to do the continuation, okay, you have to make some modification here, but in this class we don't want to focus too much on that, so let us just stick to this one, okay? So you have probability of, can anyone tell me how to get this one into Z, so miss line, how should be here? We just talk about it, right? Turn a X distribution, right, into a Z distribution. Twelve minus twenty divided by four, right? And this one is now Z. Okay? And here it is twenty-eight minus twenty divided by 4, right? So you get P negative 2 between, I mean, Z between negative 2 and 2, right? Okay, any question? So it is simple. Okay, and now let us try a different rule, right? Suppose we don't know anything about this population. We don't know anything about it. So then, if that is the case, we have to use Chebyshev inequality. Chebyshev inequality, okay, inequality. Chebyshev inequality, what's the formula? Probability of absolute value, x minus mu x, okay, less than or equal to k sigma x, is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 over k squared, right? Questions? So because of this, so when we want to find out this using this formula, right? So basically you have to try to get this thing as close as to this formula as possible, okay? So how are you going to do that? So first thing you have to get probability of x minus mu x, right? So x minus mu x, what is mu? Mu is equal to 20, right? We just talked about it. So x minus 20. Okay, if you have x minus 20, how much is left here? How much is left here? It should be 8, right? And how much is left here? Negative 8, right? So then you have equal P absolute value X minus 20, okay? Less than or equal to 8, right? And how much is 8? 8 is equal to 2 times 4, right? Okay, X 8 is equal to 2 times 4. So it is equal to k times sigma x. So sigma x is equal to 4. So how much is k? 
k is equal to 2, right? So then that should be greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 squared. So that should be equal to 0 0.75, okay? So from here you can see, if you know, okay, if you know exactly what is the probability distribution, okay? So here, it is a um, binomial, right? If you use binomial, you can get the exact value. And if you use standard normal to approximate a value, I believe here it should be equal to 0 0.9544, okay? And so, in this case, because here you use Chebyshev inequality, that means you assume, okay, you assume you don't know anything about this. So you can get the probability. It is 0 0.75, right? Okay, it is 0 0.75. This is a very rough value. But because you know more about this, so you can get a more detailed value, get more exact value. It should be 0 0.9544, okay? So there are several approaches to find out the probability of a uh, distribution, you know. When you don't know anything, use Chebyshev inequality. If you know exactly what it is, you use what that is. So for example, it's a binomial. You use binomial distribution. But if this is very complicated, of course you want to try something different. So in this case, we use a standard normal distribution to approximate it. Okay, this is much faster, okay, much more convenient. Okay, any questions so far? So then we are done with chapter 6, that is the uh, continuous random variable. Now we will get to estimation. But get to, uh, before we get to estimation, we need to talk about the sampling and sampling distribution. So it is here. Okay. Questions? Okay, then uh, we're going to talk about sampling. Questions? Okay, sampling and sampling distribution. Okay, so there are several ways to take a sample, okay? So for example, uh, let us say we are interested in the um, election results, okay? So if we are interested in the election results, of course we have to survey, okay? We have to ask people either by telephone or by questionnaire, okay? So suppose you do that by telephone. The first question you're going to have is who you are going to ask, okay? Who you are going to ask. So for you to predict, suppose, of course it's correctly, suppose you want to correctly forecast, predict what's going on in terms of the election results, who are you going to ask? You have to ask those people older than 20 years, right? At least 20 years old. So for example, uh, how old are you? Anyone less than 20 years old, raise your hand. Probably no one understand what I'm talking about. So, if you are less than 20 years old, raise your hand. Okay. So, for example, if I make a telephone call, okay, am I going to ask you, then that's wrong, right? Because for the result to be correct, you have to ask those above 20 years old, right? Because only those above 20 years old has the right to vote, okay? So, and then, Suppose you are interested in the election result of Kaohsiung City, okay? If you are interested in Kaohsiung City, then you have to, you know, figure out how many people are above 20 years, right? Only for those above 20 years old can vote. And then, you have to find out the location. Of course, in terms of convenience, because there are a lot of districts, okay? Some in districts, Nanzi districts, and, uh, you know, Chenzhen, et cetera. So you have so many districts. So because of the convenience by all these districts, of course, you can choose people by districts. 
But then you have to be careful about there may be some mistake here because the population may focus on the downtown area. So for example, Nanzi and uh, let us say, you know, Xiaogang area, it is, it is kind of in the suburb area, not many, not as many people in the downtown area. And of course the education level, okay, the party orientation, you know, some people may uh, more, you know, uh, pro KMT and some people may pro DPP. Suppose you want to get a reasonable result, a scientific survey should have taken all these things into account. So for example, if you choose 100 persons from each district, supposedly you may say, okay, because I choose the same number of people from each district, that should not be a problem. But as a matter of fact, it is a big problem because in each district, there is different size of population, okay? So suppose you want to do a 1% uh, survey, and suppose there are 1 million people in Kaohsiung City. So basically, you are going to get uh, 10,000 people, uh, I mean 10,000 samples. So if that is the case, you have to pay attention to this, okay? It should be proportion. So then let us say, you know, uh, in uh, Sunmin district or in Chenzhen district, these areas, there are more people. So you, choose, you should choose, in terms of proportion, also more people. If you choose the same number in each district, then that's not right, okay? So there are a lot of procedures you have to pay attention to. And suppose, okay, you want to choose some districts. The easy way to do is to mark a number. So let's say Nanzi is number one, Sunmin number two, Kishan number three, etc. Mark a, give each district a number and put them in a box and choose them randomly, okay? So generally, this is the way to go. We don't want to get into too much details about sampling, but basically, you know, when you do assembling, you've got to be very careful because if, you, if your sample does not reflect what's going on in terms of the population, you won't get any correct or sensible prediction. That's the first thing. And then, of course, uh, if you do the sample, okay, do the sampling, then you have to be very careful about every procedure. And because it is sampling, okay, because it is sampling, perhaps due to any kind of probability, okay, it may be wrong. So, as always, if you look at any kind of survey or opinion polls, if you look at that, they always say, you know, there is a percentage of error there, okay, so you have to very, be very careful. So generally, when you look at a situation, so suppose candidate A and candidate B, you have two candidates. So for the first one, the supporting rate is 5%. And for the second one, the supporting rate is, let us say, 4.5%. Generally, we're going to say this is neck and neck. Okay, what means neck and neck? Neck and neck means very close. Okay, so for one person, the supporting rate is 5%. The other supporting rate, 4.5%. Of course you may look at this, you know, 5% is higher than 4.4%. But, suppose the margin of error, if the margin of error is equal to 2%, so what does that mean? That means when you get a 5% supporting rate, actually it can be 7% to 3%. And what about the guy in 4.5%? It can be 6.5% or 2. 4, uh, or 2.5 percent. That means, actually, statistically, okay, statistically, it is not different, okay. So generally, you have to look at uh, a lot of situation there. So sampling, you know, when you do sample, you have to be careful about the way you do it. Sometimes, if you send out questionnaire, okay, you use mail, okay, but you know that if you send out mail, a lot of people may not pay attention to it and did not respond to your questionnaire. And of course, some, uh, the most convenient one is to use uh, telephone, okay? But sometimes, as you may know, most of you have a cellular phone but don't have a fixed line telephone. So there is a, uh, another problem with, with that too. So anyway, later on when you really need to use uh, all these kind of techniques, you need to get a reference, okay? Get a book, okay? 
to figure out all the details. Okay, so generally at this point we don't want to bother too much about this. We will get down straight to sampling distribution. Okay? We will get to sampling distribution. The reason we say we will do a sampling is because we would hope that we just look at some of the elements of the population and then we can learn from these samples and to get what's going on in terms of the population. But before doing that, of course, you need to know what's going on in terms of the sample and what's the relationship between sample and population. And here we want to talk about two distribution. The first one is sample sum. Okay, the first one is sample sum. The second one is sample mean. Okay, so here it is very important you know that in terms of population, okay, in terms of population, mu x, sigma x squared, it is a constant. It never changes because in terms of the population, what is mean, what is variance, it is already there, okay? There is no change there, okay? For whatever sample you take, it is always the same thing. So it is what we call constant, okay? It is constant, and this is, of course, a uh, population parameter. It is constant, okay? It never changes. But what about sample? Sample you have x bar, right? And then you have s x squared. So for example, if you are doing a, you know, a, a uh, survey, okay, opinion poll survey, for the Kaohsiung city, okay, you choose 10,000 people, okay, this time you choose 10,000 people, the next time you choose another 10,000 people, will these 10,000 people be the same as the other 10,000 people? No, right? So whenever you choose, whenever you do a sampling, this will change. Okay, what about this? This will change too. So this is a constant, but what about this? This is a variable. So this is a variable. Of course, this is a variable too. But these two, it is a constant. Okay? It is very easy. So for example, we know the lottery, right? Lottery. So this, uh, tonight, there will be another uh, lottery number being drawn, right? What about that? That is also a sample, right? You don't know, you don't know what's going on there. Every time you, you, you choose six number, will the six number this time be the same as next time? No, right? Because it is simple, you randomly choose them. So the number will always change, but of course, Sometimes it is the same, but only for a few numbers. Suppose, okay, suppose it's the same, then why should you, you know, uh, buy lottery and for the number to be chosen by computer? You choose the same number, right? So this is sample, okay, lottery is a good example here. So this is a constant, okay, for mean, population mean, population variance, it is always constant, it never changes. But what about sample mean and sample variance? It always changes. If you get a different sample, most likely you will get a different mean, different variance. Of course, sometimes you may get the same, but it is very, very rare, okay? Very, very rare. So here it is the... So actually these two are random variables. These two are also random variables. So now let us say the mean, okay? We are interested in x, right? We are interested in x. And we know that the the mean is mu x. The variance is sigma x squared. And now we want to get two variables. The first variable is what we call sample sum, okay, we use S to de denote it, this is sample sum, and this one is sample mean, okay, and of course here in this case you choose a lot of samples, so let us say you choose N samples, X1, 
x2, etc., xn. So remember, these are samples. Okay, these are samples. And what is simple sum? Simple sum is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus etc. to xn. So here it is simple sum. So of course we, we would like to find out, okay, there must be some relationship between s and x, okay? There must be some relationship between x and s. And what is that? Okay, what is that? So to figure out that, the relationship, so we have, we need to find out, okay, if x, this variable, has the mean of mu x, variance of sigma x squared, what is the mean here, and what's the variance here? Okay, so this is what we are going to find out. So of course, if you want to find out the mean, okay, if you are going to find out the mean, how are you going to get it? Expectation, right? Okay, so expectation of S. So, because we know S is equal to X1, X2, X3, etc. to Xn. So what is expectation of S? Expectation of S is equal to expectation X1 plus X2 plus etc. Xn. Okay? And what is that equal to? Expectation X1 plus expectation x2 plus etc. expectation xn. So here you got to remember each one, okay, each one is a random sample, it is a random variable. And where does this come from? This comes from here, right? This one comes from here, this one comes from here. So when you have expectation of x1, what should that be? That should be mu x. What about here? If you have drawing a lot of times, what would you expect? You expect this one to be mu x, etc. mu x. So, what do you get? You get n times mu x. Okay? So here, if you have a population looking like this, then you have a simple sum, the mean should be n times mu x. Okay? Any questions? Okay, so we already done with mean, right? Let us try to find out the variance. Okay, the variance, of course, you are trying to figure out vs, right? Vs. So then you have V X1 plus X2 plus etc. plus Xn. Okay? So here what you're gonna get? Then you have to have some assumption here. So we assume it is a independent random sampling. Okay? Independent random sampling. If it is independent random sampling, what does that mean? That means covariance x1, x2, x1, x3, x1 up to xn, it should be equal to what? It should be equal to zero. If x, if, if x and y are independent, then what about covariance xy? Covariance xy is equal to zero, right? Okay? So here what you have? You have v x1 plus v x2 plus etc. v xn. So here you have sigma x squared, right? Plus sigma x squared plus etc. sigma x squared. So what you get? N times sigma x squared. So then here it is N times sigma x squared. Okay, any question to this point? So then we are done with simple sum distribution, okay, the distribution of sample sum. Now we are going to get to sample mean, okay? Any question? Okay, can I erase this here? Can I erase this here? Okay. 
So now let's look at sem po min. Okay, what is x bar? X bar is actually s divided by n. Because here it is simple sum, right? This is the simple sum and divided by the number of samples, what you get? You get sample mean, okay? So the same thing we are going to find out in terms of the uh, expectation, okay? So first we get, this is the population, and here it is sample sum. And now the next one we're gonna find out what is the sample mean, right? Sample mean, the distribution of that, the uh, mean, okay, and the variance. So the same thing, we need to get the expectation. So expectation of x bar, okay, what is that? That is equal to expectation, okay, s divided by n, okay? And so n is a constant, right? n is, constant, is a constant, so we can move this out. So 1 over n expectation of s. Okay? What is this? We already know this, right? This is equal to n times mu x. So that is equal to 1 over n times n times mu x. So what is that equal to? That is equal to mu x. Okay? Questions? Okay, after dealing with the mean, then we have to try to find out the variance, okay? The same thing here. The only difference is, now we are going to find out variance of x bar, right? Now we are going to find out variance of x bar. Variance of x bar is equal to variance of s divided by n, okay? Because here, what is x bar equal to? x bar is equal to s divided by n, okay? Okay, so what you get? Now, I want to move this out. What should I get? The girl in uh, green shirts. So what should be here? If I am going to move n out, okay, it is 1 over n squared, right? Okay, times v of s. And what is that equal to? 1 over n squared, and here we already know it, right? It is equal to n times sigma x squared. Okay, so what is that equal to? Sigma squared sigma x squared divided by n. So, if you know the population looks like this, mean, mu x, variance, sigma x squared, then the simple sum must be equal to n times mu x and the variance n times sigma x squared. And what about the mean? Should be mu x. What about the variance? Sigma x squared divided by n. Okay. So because of this, you really can figure out, because if we know population, right? If we know population, actually, we can get sample, right? This is the sample we're going to get, okay? When you do sampling, actually, there is a corresponding relationship between population, sample sum, and sample mean, okay? So because of this, if you do a sample, okay, if you get a sample, from those samples, you should be able to figure out what's going on in terms of the population as long as your sampling method is correct and as long as the probability works fine, okay? So this is the um, sample mean, sample sum, okay? And the relationship between the population. Now we want to get to some examples here, okay? It is only when we get some example you know what's going on there, okay? Okay, questions? Questions? Okay. Okay, now we get, we have three persons, okay? So we have A, B, 
the three persons. Okay, A has fifty dollars and B has one hundred dollars and C has one hundred and fifty dollars. Okay? Now we are going to randomly choose two. Okay? We are going to randomly randomly choose two persons. Find out Okay, so we have A, B, C, three persons, right? So A has $50, B has $100, C has $150, okay? And now we are going to randomly choose two persons. Okay, we have three persons, but you're going to randomly choose two persons. And of course, these two persons, you get, you know, the respective money they have, right? And you are going to find out what is the distribution of the sum of the money they have. So this is sample sum distribution. Okay, you are going to find out the sample sum distribution. Okay. Because you have three people, right? Okay, and let us say it is uh, drawing with replacement. Okay, let us say it is drawing with replacement. You're going to choose two drawing with replacement. So what you're gonna get? You may get A, A, right? You may get A, B, and A, C, right? And also you can you may get B, A, B, B, and B, C, right? And also you may get C, A, C, B, and C. So let us say uh, this is the population, right? If you have n population, the population is n, and the sample size. So this is sample size little n. Okay, this is the sample size. And so if you do this kind of experiment, if you do this kind of sampling, how many sample you're going to have? You're going to have n to n power. So here it is three to two's power, right? So you have a total of nine different samples. So let me repeat this again. So suppose you do this kind of experiment, okay? You have three persons, okay? And you are going to choose two from them, okay? And let us say it is drawing with replacement. So you draw A and then put it back again. And so in this case, you may choose A, A, you know, twice being A. And A, B, A, C, and et cetera. So if the experiment is this kind, and what would be the number of samples? It is the, sem the population size to the sample size power, okay? Here you have population three people, right? The sample size two, okay? So it is three to two's power, okay? But what we are looking at is actually, okay, the sample sum distribution, okay? So of course you can do what's required, but the other way to do it is just try to figure out x. The reason is, according to the discussion we just have, we know that if mu x, the mean is, mu, I mean for x, this random variable, if the mean is mu x, variance sigma x squared, then what you're gonna get? What's the mean? It has to be n times mu x, n times sigma x squared. And what about x bar? It will be mu x and sigma x squared divided by n. 
so for this kind of question, actually, of course you can do, you know, here, okay? Step by step here you have uh, 50 plus 50, uh, 50 plus 100, 50 plus 150, okay? And here you have 100 plus 150, uh, I mean, sorry, 100 plus 50, 100 plus 100, 100 plus 150, etc. Okay, you can do this. But the convenient way is to use simple sum distribution and simple mean. But of course here we only talk about simple sum, not simple mean. But, so as a matter of fact, you just try to find out this. That will be enough. Okay. So let us try this way first. So actually, we are going to find out x, right? So x, you have 50, 100, and 150. So this is your population. Okay, this is your population. So then the mu x, okay, mu x is equal to what? Mu x is equal to 50 plus 100 plus 50, sorry, 150 divided by 3. Okay, so what you get? It is 300, right? Divided by 3, so it is 100. So here, this number is actually 100. Okay? Any questions? Okay, let us get to the variance, right? So variance, it is sigma x squared. Divided by 3, right? And uh, you have, okay? 50 minus 100 square plus 100 minus 100 square plus 150 minus 100 square. So what you get? You get 2500 plus 2500 divided by 3. Is that right? Yeah, is it right? Okay, that's right. So um, it will be equal to 5,000 divided by 3. Okay, so what should be here? Here it should be 5,000 divided by 3. So because of this, really you don't have to do any kind of calculation. What you get here, right? So if you use this formula, S is n times mu x, n times sigma x squared. If you use this formula, Okay, what should be here and what should be here? The lady in uh, yellow coat. So what should be here? 200, okay? And what should be here? Ten thousand, right? Ten thousand divided by three. Okay? Of course, what you can do here is trying to use uh, what we just have, right? So let us say the first one is 50 plus 100 and then 50 plus um, 150 and then 50 plus 50, right? So this is A, B, A, C, A, A, right? Okay, and then you're gonna have 100 plus 50, 100 plus 100, and then you have 100 plus 150. Okay, that's for the B part, okay? B, A, B, 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 C, okay? And then you have 150 plus 150, 150 plus 50, and 150 plus 100. So the same thing. Now you get all these number, right? If you calculate the sum and to, I mean, here is the sum. And then you calculate the mean, okay, you calculate the mean, you should get here, okay, you should get here. And if you calculate the variance, you should get here. Okay, you, get, you should get this number, okay? So, no, if you don't believe me, just go back home and do this exercise again. Then you should be able to find out the mean is exactly 200 and the variance is exactly 10,000 divided by three. Okay, any questions?
let us take a break. Look at another example. So we have x. It is a normal distribution. The mean is 10 and the variance is 1. Now we observe 10 samples, so we get 10 out of it, okay? And then we are, you are going to find out what's the probability that the sample sum will be between 94 and 104. The second question, you've got 25 samples, okay, you've got more, and what is the probability, okay, P-R-O-B, okay, I just, uh, it's just too difficult to fill out the whole world, so we use P-R-O-B, probability that the sample mean will be between 9.4 and 10.6. So, in this case, you need to turn the words into formula, okay? You need to turn the words into formula. So x is like that, and what about here? Here you are required to find out the first question, probability of s between 10,000, I mean 106 and 94. So this is the first question, okay? The second question is probability of 9.4 between x bar and 10.6. So basically, that's the question you are dealing with. And because we know the, proper, the property of simple sum and simple mean, so as a matter of fact, if x is a normal distribution, mean 0, variance 1, then what about s? Here you have a sample size of 10, right? So it should be uh, miss 10, what should be here? In terms of the mean and uh, variance, what should be here? If x is mu x sigma x squared, what about here? It is n times mu x, n times sigma x squared. So what should be here? So it should be 10 times 10, right? So it is 100. And what about here? It is 10, okay? What about x bar? Okay, the lady behind Miss 10. Okay, so what should be here? x bar. If it is x bar, 10, okay? And what about the variance? What about variance? 10? Are you sure? I'll get a gentleman behind. What should be here? How many samples do we have for the second question? How many samples do we have for the second question? 25, right? So what should be here? What should be here? Okay, it's your turn. What should be here? 1 over 25, okay? Okay, then, you know, if you know all these, it should be easy, right? Then we turn this question, okay, into Z. Turn S into Z. So you have probability, okay, less than or equal to Z, less than or equal to, okay, the girl in purple coat, what should be here? Excuse me? Minus 10? Are you sure there's 10? What's the mean here? 100, right? And what should be here? 10? Are you sure? 10? Square root of 10, right? And here you have 94 minus 100 square root of 10, okay? So basically, if you calculate this, okay, if you calculate this, you should be able to get it. So we don't want to bother with the details, okay? The calculation is on your own, okay? The calculation is on your own. Let's now get to the second question, okay? 
second question here, you have the same thing. You want to turn it into z, right? So less than equal to z, less than equal to here. Okay, the next one. So what should be here? Ten point six minus ten divided by one over five, right? What about here? Nine point four minus ten divided by one over five. The same thing. Okay? So basically if you know the properties of simple sum, simple mean, okay, as long as the question, you can decipher what's going on there, turn the words into formula, you should be able to get it. Okay? Any questions? Okay, let us get to the next question. Can I erase this now? Okay. So this question we have 200 workers in a factory. One hundred sixty female. Okay. Randomly choose twenty five. S is the number of female in this sample. The question is the second one Okay, the third one, the same thing. Okay, now let's look at this question. We have, in a factory, there are 200 workers, okay? In a factory, there are 200 workers, and among these 100 workers, 160 are female. So you have 40 male, okay? You have 160 female workers, and of course you have 40 male workers. And now we're gonna choose 25 people from this factory, okay? We randomly choose 25. S is the number of female in this sample, okay? So we choose 25 and we want to know how many people are female. And so S is the number of female, okay? S is the number of female in this sample. And so the first question, what is the distribution of S? Okay, what is the distribution of S? The second question, among these 25 people, so you choose a sample of 25, right? What's the probability that at least 80% are female? Okay, what's the probability that at least 80% are female? And the second question is, I mean the third question is, what's the probability of female that is less than 60%? Okay, if you choose 25 out of it, what's the probability that 60% 
I mean, the number of female is less than 60%. And then the last question is, what's the num probability of female between 0 0.68 and uh, 0 0.92? Okay? So now the first question, what is the distribution of S? Okay? What is FS? Okay? What is FS? So, the girl next to the girl with gray coat, so that's, that's you, you're looking at me, right? Okay, the one before Mr. Yang Tingwei. Okay, so what's the probability distribution of S? What's the probability distribution of S? If you look at this, what does it look like? It looks like... Okay, Yang, Ting, Yang Tingwei, your turn. What is FS? What does it look like? It is either male or female, right? So what should that kind of probability distribution? It's you. So, binomial, right? Exactly, binomial. So can you tell me what's the probability function for that? It should be equal to 25, because you choose 25 out of you, right? And what's the number of female? S, right? What's the probability you're going to get a female? 0 0.8, right? To what power? S power, right? 0 0.2 to 25 minus S power. So actually, this is a binomial distribution. So among these 25, what's the probability that at least, okay, 80% are female, okay? How are you going to get that? So if you're going to get 80% female, what should be the number? If you have to get at least 80% female, what is the corresponding number? S, right? Because S is the number, right? Here you are looking at probability or proportion. You are looking at S, okay? So, Mr. Wu. So if you want to get probability, I mean 80% of the female, 80% is female, right? Okay, if it is the case, can you tell me, if you get 25 person, how many should be female to have 80% of female? Because you choose 25, right? And now the probability you get is at least 80% female, right? How many, at least, what's the number should be female? S, the corresponding S. What is this? This is relative frequency, right? And this is what? Frequency, right? So how are you going to get a corresponding S? If you want to get 80% female, what should be the number S today? So in terms of proportion here, you know, if you turn it into a formula, it should be P, okay, of uh, what should be the uh, let us say x, right? How x greater than or equal to 0 0.8, right? But what do we need to know? We need to know s, not x, right? Here it is a proportion. So the proportion of female must be greater than or equal to 0 0.8. But if I want to put down P of S, what should be the number here? 25 times 0 0.8, right? So what should be the number? 20, right? What about here? You need to know P probability of S, it is, okay? x less than 0 0.6, right? What does that mean? That means probability of s less than 